Hi guys, I'm Yuva. This is an update regarding the rules of the TOEFL Home Edition. There have been a few changes recently. One of these changes is really bad, others make the test taking more convenient for you. If you consider taking the TOEFL at home, this video is for you. Let's get started. Change number one. Let's do the bad news first. There has been a major change that affects the whole test taking process. And actually guys, this is a change that I consider quite unfortunate. As I told you in another video, when I took the test, I was allowed to use several transparency sheets. Each transparency sheet had one piece of white paper in it. And the only thing I needed to do was to count them in front of the proctor before taking the test and after taking the test so that the proctor knew how many sheets I had and that I had erased all of my notes. This is no longer the case. On their website, ETS say that you are only allowed to use one transparency sheet or one whiteboard. What are the consequences of this change? You will need to erase your notes during the test unless you have a very, very small handwriting. And this is something that I consider quite unfortunate because in the TOEFL, you only have a very limited amount of time between each task. There is one task and then comes the next and then comes the next. And there is really not much time between these tasks to erase your notes. Therefore, guys, I'd highly recommend practicing this before. Take a transparency sheet, put a piece of white paper in it and figure out how much space you will need for each task so that you know when taking the test when you will have to erase your notes and so that you can include that in your time management. Change number two. This is to all Mac users. If you are a Mac user, this change will make you quite happy. Some time ago, it was not so easy for Mac users to take the TOEFL Home Edition because you had to install Windows on your Mac in order to take it. This is no longer the case. On their website, ETS states the requirements that your Mac needs to satisfy for the TOEFL Home Edition. If you satisfy these requirements, you simply go to the section where it says browser download and systems check. And there you can download the ETS browser. You simply click on the link, download the Mac version and it's done. That's it. You don't need to do anything else. Dear Mac users, I hope this makes your day. Let's go on with number three, the link. We stay in the technical requirements area. On their website, ETS has a link that leads you to proctor use technical requirements. I am not sure whether they included this link recently or whether it has already been there. I consider this really important, so I want to talk about that. Guys, check out this link. This link is so important. It includes points such as Windows S is not supported, Google Chromebooks are not supported, or tablets are not supported. So the website basically tells you everything, what you need to know about the technical requirements your device needs to satisfy. If you don't check that out and realize shortly before the test that your device does not satisfy the technical requirements, it may be too late and you may may not be able to take the test. So that's why it's really, really important that you check out this link. I can't stress that enough. I put the link in the description below for you guys. So simply click on that and check it out. By the way, what can you do if you find out that your device does not satisfy the technical requirements? So obviously you don't need to buy a new computer just to take the TOEFL Home Edition. I'd recommend 
asking a family member or a friend or somebody you know whether he or she can borrow you his device. You only need to install the ETS browser for the test and the PropTU intention and both can be deinstalled after you've taken the test so they won't make any lasting changes to the computer and also it's only for four to six hours depending on how long the whole test taking process takes. I'm sure many people will be happy to help you out so I would recommend you just ask. Here comes change number four, hot tip. There is a new tip on the ETS website and it's a really good one. ETS recommends to run the systems check at different times a day so that you can figure out when your internet is really fast. The reason for this is that at some times of the day many many people may be online and this may slow down your internet speed. So definitely check that out. I can provide you with a real life example for that. I live in college and in the mornings my internet is really fast whereas in the evenings it's really slow. This may be because many people are binge watching Netflix in the evenings or doing something different because in the evening it's free time. That's why I can highly recommend you running the systems check at different times of the day and so you can figure out which time of the day is best. If you find out that your internet speed is really slow at some times of the day, don't book these slots. It can be really annoying if your internet is slow when you want to take the test. It may even happen that you can't take the test at all because the pages don't load. So definitely check that out and make sure that you book a slot at the proper time. And also make sure that you run the systems check at different times a day way before you want to take the test because if you want to book a slot at a particular time of the day you should book this slot well in advance because otherwise that slot may already be taken by another person. Make sure you run the systems check early so that you can book your slot on time. Number five what they don't say. This is something that has not changed. There are three things they never stated in the rules and they still don't do it. And actually I'm quite surprised that they don't state that because I had to do all of these three things. So keep in mind that you may need to do them. What happened? The first thing I had to do was that before taking the test the proctor asked me to roll up my sleeves like this and show my arms so that he could make sure that I didn't hide anything. I'd recommend you rolling up your sleeves and showing your arms to the proctor regardless of whether he asks you to do that or not because this is something that doesn't cause any inconvenience for you and like that you make sure that you definitely obey the rules. Nobody can say in the end that you didn't roll up your sleeves so simply do it because it's just easy to do it and then you're safe. The second thing is the glasses issue. I wore my glasses during the test because otherwise I wouldn't have seen anything and the proctor asked me to take off my glasses like this and show them to him so that he could make sure that they were not smart glasses and I also had to confirm explicitly that my glasses are not smart glasses. So if you wear glasses during the TOEFL home edition make sure you do that regardless of whether the proctor asks you to take off your glasses or not. Just take them off, show them to the proctor and confirm to him explicitly that they are not smart glasses like that you are safe, you make sure that you definitely obey the rules and everything's fine. Number three the desk issue. As far as I remember when I took the test it wasn't stated in the rules that you need to show to the proctor what's under your desk. Still the proctor asked me to take my laptop, turn it around and show to him what's under my desk so I had to do that. I'd recommend you if you are taking the test on a laptop 
regardless of whether the proctor asks you to do it or not, take your laptop, turn it around and show it to the proctor what's under your desk. Like that, you make sure that you definitely obey the rules. Of course, if you take the task on a desktop computer, this may be quite difficult. So in this case, I'd recommend asking the proctor whether he wants you to show to him what's under your desk. If he says yes, ask him how you can do that. Guys, I have one last advice for you. When taking the TOEFL Home Edition, there are so many rules you need to follow and it's so easy to forget one or several of them. On their website, ETS provide a checklist where you can go through each point and check whether you satisfy this requirement. And I'd really recommend using this checklist. You can find the link to this checklist in the description below. Use it, check every point, and like that, you make sure that you will be fine, that there will be no issues during the test. That's it. These are the major changes regarding the rules of the TOEFL Home Edition. If you consider taking the TOEFL at home, make sure that you keep these rules in mind. I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you have already taken the TOEFL at home, tell us about your experience in the comments below. And if you want to have a particular topic covered in this channel, tell me about that comment below. I would love to hear what interests you. See you next time. Bye bye.